The price of food is going up, so we need some simple and effective ways to keep our budget low, our fridges full, and our family happy. Let's go. Well, hey everyone, it's Kelly, the Frugal Fun Mum. I'm in Adelaide, Australia, and I wanna welcome you to the channel and to today's video where I wanna teach you the rules that I use when I'm food shopping to make sure our budget stays as low as possible, keeps our fridge and freezer full and our pantry packed. It's not always about markdown shopping when you use this rule. It's going to override any markdown that you find, but it is going to be a way to help you save money. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining with me on this channel. We have lots and lots of videos, tips and tricks to help you save money, budgeting, menu plans, food shopping, markdown shopping, which is super popular, and lots of other fun things. So subscribe if you haven't already, because we would love to have you as part of our frugal fun family. And I hope that we can have some fun along the way and I can teach you a thing or two about what we do to keep our budget super low. So if you've been here for half a second, you'll know that I am a massive markdown shopper and absolutely I will get those things because those things are cheaper than the things I can already get. But I often don't buy everything as I've done in previous videos. I've shown you guys what I see, what I take and what I leave. Why? Because I have a rule and I have a rule for every single item of food we buy. And the rule is it's a baseline price and I will not spend any more money than what it is if it's cheaper than that on sale or a markdown and we need it, tick, it's coming home with us. If it's not, it stays there. Then we manipulate our meal plan and go to something else or we go without. So I'm going to basically take you around my kitchen, open the fridge, open the freezer, pull out the things that we constantly buy. No doubt there'll be a few edits because no doubt once I open that freezer, I'll drop something on my foot. So I'll cut that out. But I'm going to literally show you what the item is, what the price is, what I'm prepared to pay for it, and then what I'd pay if it's a markdown, just to show you guys some examples. The biggest way that this tip is going to support and help you is that you need to know your prices. I can tell you how much a litre of milk is, a loaf of bread, the butter, the flour, da 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 I know it all. I have rope learned it over and over and over again. Now with inflation and just craziness, prices are going up. So they're things I've had to be aware of and focus on. So I have a price book, which I've talked about in previous videos, and I'm tracking what the prices are to things. People are finding really quickly that they need to shop around between all the different stores. That might not be new information to you, but please be aware that this is something new to others. They were very loyal to one supermarket and now are finding that they can get deals elsewhere. So it is all about learning different tips and tricks that's going to best support you and your family's budget. So first of all, if you know me, <laughs> welcome back. If not, you would know that our freezer is chock a block full of frozen gear. Absolutely. And because I do a lot of markdown shopping, when I see something that's cheap, I will be able to buy it. The rule that I have when it comes to meat is about $1 for every 100 grams. That's what I'm willing to pay, which balances out well when you look at something like chicken. Because chicken for a kilo is about $10. So $10 for a hundred for a kilo or a dollar per hundred grams, it works out well. So anything I can get cheaper than that for like $7.99 a kilo, I'm going to stock up. I'm going to get two or three kilos. There are a couple of food lands near us that they have that price very constantly. So I will easily buy two kilos. We cook one kilo that week and then we chop up the rest and we freeze it. 
So then the next week we go back and either buy another kilo or two kilos and we repeat the process again until we hit the point that we have enough chicken for now that we need to make sure we're going to go through it so we don't have freezer burn or we hit a week where there's no special and I'm like, that's okay. We can coast with what we have. Okay, mince meat again, $10 for a kilo. So of course I buy them when they're marked down. Here's one mince I got that's frozen. It's 500 grams for $4.55. And here's another packer I got that was $3. So I bought both of these and I threw them in the freezer. I got a packet of mints for $3.50 for a pack. So I bought two packs, even though I have about four in the freezer. So these will go in to be frozen. Two of those will come out to get defrosted. And then this week we will have a lasagna or meatballs. So again, the markdowns determine what meals that we eat for that week. For standard pies and pasties, I won't pay any more than $2 for an item, especially if it's just a basic generic food. But this pack often goes on special for pasties for $4, making them a dollar each. For anything generic like that, I will pay either a pie or a pasty. I won't buy sausage rolls, however, because I can often get sausage meat for $1.99, add two sheets of puff pastry and this makes eight sausage rolls that's equal to 37 cents each cheaper than the dollar and homemade delicious and gone very quickly when it comes however to specialty pies herbert adams seems to be a really good front runner lately and of course i will only buy these when they're super super on special they're about a two pack for eight dollars no thank you on sale for $6.50, no thank you. On sale for $4.25, yes please. So for just over $2, which is my limit, I'm gonna buy them. Because they're a little bit more quality with their ingredients, I'm gonna buy them. However, when I can buy individual pies for 50 cents each on clearance in Coles, pure lucky find of the day, and there's 10 on the shelf, I'm buying them and they're going in my freezer. There are some meats that I don't know a lot about, and again, I tend to buy these because they're a markdown. I still use the rule of a dollar per 100 grams, and sometimes the packaging will really help me, and then if there's a markdown on top of it, then I really understand where I'm going. So the first example I have for you guys is this peri peri chicken, it's frozen. It was $7.50 a kilo and it's been marked down to $6.27. So while probably not the most amazing markdown, it's still pretty good. Yes, it's then by the time you pull all the meat off the bone, it is a little bit more expensive than the $10 a kilo. However, this is seasoned and all I have to do is serve it on a plate. So I don't mind paying a little bit extra for something that I just cook and serve. I don't need to add anything else to it. The rules for fruit and vegetables I have is no more than $4 a kilo. Apples are a prime example. At our local fruit and veg shop, the whole varieties, Granny Smith's, Pink Ladies, whatever they are, can range anywhere from 99 cents up to about 5.99. So I pick whatever looks the best for the price and for whatever we need, whether it's snacks or to put inside a dessert. The same goes with vegetables. I will buy frozen, absolutely, but when these come on special as fresh for under $4, then I'll buy them because they're cheaper, blanch them and then freeze them. You get to learn after a while what the general prices are for fruit and veg, what's a good deal and what's not, so keep your eye out for it. So when it comes to things like markdowns, you can work out whether it's a good price or not. On average at our fruit and veg shop, we can get sweet potatoes for anywhere from $1.49 up to about $3.49. So when I see these 500 gram packs for 80 cents, I double it to make a kilo, it's $1.60, it's just a bit over the 149 if they're not on special that week because I stopped there first before going to Coles. 
if they're dearer than that and I see this, I'll pick them up. I usually will pick this up anyway because I can chuck this straight in the freezer, as you can see. And then this will take easily about four meals to go through. So then it's frozen and it's in the freezer ready to go. In the meantime, if I find any fresh, then I'll buy it, chop it up, freeze it, or we'll cook it that week in a stew. These are literally the backup of the backup for emergencies if I can't find a special. Speaking of fruits and vegetables, I forgot about the carrots. They're usually about $2 a bag these days when they go on special down to about $1.20. However, at my food land, they often have them from anywhere from 79 cents to about 99 cents a kilo. You can also buy juicing carrots and at Woolworths, they also have the imperfect ones. They can be cheaper than the standard. So keep your eye out for a bag of carrots and how much they cost. Into the fridge now. So we have butter that's 500 grams. It used to be $5, it is now $5.60. I'm gonna still pay that because it's everyday low price. It's cheaper to buy the bigger block at 500 grams and chop it in half yourself than buy the smaller 250 grams. Unless you can find it at a markdown, so then I'm gonna buy them. These freeze really well, so it's worth stocking up and having them there. But also NQI had a couple of these the other week for $2.50. So worth purchasing these even when these were still $5 because instead of chopping them in half, the work is already done for me. This is the butter that I use from Woolworths for the base of our Rizzoni's and I will often chop it up into sections that we need and throw it in the freezer or keep it in the fridge. Their everyday shelf price is $3, but they will go on special for $2.50, which is when I will buy two and then, yep, divide them up and throw them in the fridge or the freezer. I now have enough for quite a few months worth of meals because I look every week to check. So I'm more than willing to pay for a brand name price when it's on special and that's when I'll buy a couple of them to stock up ready to go. For a 300 tub of cream, it used to be $2, it's now about $2.20, so I won't pay any more than that for a home brand price. However, when I can find a brand name price that is on markdown or on sale that's cheaper, then I'll buy them. They freeze really well and then this is the base of my Rizzoni. The same with sour cream. This is frozen, it's an older container from Woolworths. These were $2 and then they've gone up to $2.20. They're one cent cheaper at Audi, so if you want that, go for it. However, I will buy them when they're marked down. And then, as I said, I can freeze them. And then this is a great base for quiches or any other like chicken base sauces that I need. For standard juices, I won't pay any more than a dollar for a litre. However, this has now gone up to $2.15 for two litres. I'm still willing to pay for that because this is what the price is. However, I will buy when the Tetra packs of the Golden Circle go on special for $1.07 because I can get 10 cents refund of the container making the liter 97 cents. So cheaper than this option, but only when it's on special. I don't massively stock up when they're there. I will just buy three or four of them and then that's it. And then go back to our regular product. Milk, we just get everyday home brand. I usually only buy about a liter, which is $1.35, sometimes two liters. But if I find something that's a brand name and a markdown, then I'm going to purchase it because then this way, I make sure that I will incorporate this into a meal plan. This would be a great base for ice cream or for white sauce for our lasagna. So I make the price work for me and work it into our meal plan. One of our favorites in this house, we are South Australian after all, is Farmers Union Ice Coffee. Yes, I know we can make it ourselves, but nothing tastes the same. This used to be $4.30, it's now gone up to $4.70. <laughs> that nearly killed me. So I often will go to Audi to purchase, there's one there for $3.49, but if I can get it as a markdown, then I'll purchase it, absolutely. It goes pretty quick in our house, so I don't really need to worry about expiry dates. And hey, iced coffee is iced coffee, but 
you can't beat a farmer's union iced coffee. We eat a lot of eggs in our household. I use them as a base for ice cream, for quiches, for breakfasts, whatever takes fancy. They start at $3.30 on average at Coles and Woolworths and go all the way up to $7, $8 for more free range, etc, etc. I, of course, will pay $3.30 if I have exhausted all options, but usually I can find them as a markdown. So $1.50 for a pack of 12 eggs. Then that way, again, I put them into the meal plan to make sure they get used. We're suddenly having scrambled eggs for breakfast on the weekend. We're having a quiche or I'm making uh, ice cream. So they're going to get used quick that week. Let's talk about cheese. And this is probably where my rule comes undone just a little bit. So a kilo block of cheese it used to be $8. It's now $9 at Coles and Woolworths. So if I can find it any cheaper than $9, then I'm absolutely going to purchase it. But when it comes to sliced cheese... <laughs> It's $7 for 24 slices, so that makes it $14 a kilo compared with the $8. However, for the sanity of my family, morning sandwich prep, and everyone being independent to make their own sandwiches, I'm happy to pay the price for this. If I go to Coles and this is not available, then I don't buy anything else. I will just come home and make sure we have enough cheese cut sliced ready for the lunches. I'll see if I can go to Woolworths and buy it or maybe go to Audi if we need it. If not, we'll make do and wait till the week after to purchase this. I won't buy another brand that's more expensive. $7 is my rule. I don't go over it. Both Coles and Woolworths sell this four pack of ham, excuse that we've opened it. Uh, it's in here. Each little compartment has eight slices in it. So I purchased this because then I know one pack of these will do one person for a sandwich every day. It is 400 grams. So it works out to be $13.75 for a kilo. If you look at the white tag on the shelf. So when I can find ham that is marked down and it works out price per kilo to be cheaper than that one, then I'm going to purchase it because again, I know then that we're going to go through this in the week or I'm going to chop up the ham and it's going to be used for the top of our pizzas or I can throw it in the freezer for when we need it. A tin of coffee is 500 grams. It is shelf price for $20. With inflation, it's gone up to $22. So best ever price on sale used to be $14. It's now gone up to $16. I'd happily pay that because it's better than $22. Coffee sachets. Yes, it's cheaper to drink instant coffee. However, who doesn't want a bit of luxury in their life? And getting these, it is cheaper than takeaway coffee. If you have a coffee machine, power to you. But this is all we have right now and a kettle. And we're more than happy with it. Shelf price, they are $7 each. However, they will go on special for $3.50. The oat ones or the gold are only six packs, whereas these are 10. So a little bit more pricey. So wait till they go on special for $3.50. Because usually they'll only drop to about $4.30. Uh-uh. I wait till $3.50. Thank you very much. I get these for my daughter because they don't have any milk solids to them. They have the oat base, which helps with her digestive system, as well as the oat milk that she drinks, which we'll get to in a minute. Of course, to go with our coffee sachet, so we feel like we're indulging in a little bit of luxury, we need some drinking chocolate. This is Coles Hot Chocolate. It's $3 for 400 grams. That is the everyday shelf price. I've never, ever, 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 ever seen it on special. We used to get the Cadbury's one, especially when it would come down on special to be $3. We find this one is exactly the same as that. So we stick with this. Even when the smaller ones of the Cadbury go on special for the unit price, it's not cheaper than this. So we stick with this one. My daughter has this vegan chai tea. Shelf price is $6.50. It will go on special for about $5.50. And the best of a price I've seen it down to is $4.25. So I'll stock up. It is a new product to our household. So I have paid a couple of times the $6.50 price. 
but it's part of my daughter's evening routine. So I'm more than happy to have this in the house, but I try and stay ahead of the ball game. And when it's on special, I'll stock up for a couple of them. Milo, super popular in our house, but one of those products that can be super confusing because it comes in so many different sizes. This is where I will use my rule again of $1 per 100 grams to work out if it's a good deal or not. You can stand there and look at all the unit prices and what they are for the specials compared to what's not on special and kind of get an average. And if you have a price book and you're tracking, then that will really help you. However, I can tell you right now that I paid $10 for one kilo tin. So that is bang on my rule. You can go to places like Costco that sell 1.25 kilo tins. They're $12.50 or they're $13.50. So again, about on par and not bad. If you haven't seen Milo on special for ages then and you've got access to Costco or a bigger bulk deal, it might be worth working it out. But again, go buy the average price of about a dollar per 100 grams and you can't go wrong. Flour and sugar, while being a staple in many people's households, also has not dodged the price increase. It used to be a dollar per kilo, and then if you bought a two kilo bag, it would actually be a dollar eighty for a two kilo. So being cheaper, so bigger, was better in that circumstance. It is still cheaper to buy the bigger bags, but now a two kilo bag of flour or sugar, instead of it being the dollar eighty, it's now two twenty. So it is a bit of a price increase. For us, we still buy home brand, we find it easier. So if I'm gonna find anything cheaper, then I will buy it. The reject shop had one kilo bags of self-raising flour for 75 cents at one point. So I bought four bags because I knew that I could fit them in the container that I had and put them in the freezer to kill any weevils as well. I didn't buy any more than that because I knew it would take us a little bit longer to go through. So make sure you're looking again at the price per kilo and don't just stick to maybe Coles and Woolworths, but look at other places that sell products as well. We buy a lot of products home brand when it comes to things like peanut butter and jam. This was a price example that I did in an Audi shopping video. So for 500 grams of jam at Audi, it was $1.39 and at Coles, it was $1.30. And the peanut butter is home brand $1.70. Yes, you can buy the bigger brands if you want to. Again, just be aware of the price. I don't know what the prices are for those because I don't pay for them. I just buy a home brand. Oat milk is what my daughter has instead of regular cow's meal. This is an Uncle Toby's oat milk. And I have no idea what the price was because it was a freebie from Flybys from Coles. So thank you very much. So I will take that because it's free. This is one of the options that she has, minor figures. It's on shelf price for $4.80. It goes on special for $3.80, so we're saving a dollar. But Foodland here in South Australia often has it on sale for $2.20, so I buy about 10. One of these as a liter will last her about a week, so that should hold me out until the next sale cycle. The other one I purchased for her is the Coles Oat Milk, so it has the exactly same ingredients. It's $3.50 for a litre, so should we run out of this without any stock, I'll pay $3.50 because the next one up waiting on a special is $3.80. So again, it's stocking up when you get a really good price. Rice and pasta are staples in our household, probably like many others. At a minimum, a one kilo bag is $1.40 and it goes up with prices and sizing. We just buy a home brand. If you buy a brand name, check the unit prices to see what you're paying. Pasta, it depends what kind of pasta person you are. We're more than happy with this brand. The blue brand is 80 cents each. You can get another brand that's a dollar. The reject shop sells pasta for 75 cents. Again, it depends where you live and what you're willing to pay. Lasagna sheets are a must have in our house. The Coles 250 gram pack is on shelf for $2. However, there's hardly any around these days. They have other similar brands there that are also $2, so I'll purchase them either way. But I sometimes will buy a brand name because it's on 
a markdown. So for the weight and the price, it's well worth it to have that in the cupboard. The same for when we have our Rizzoni pasta. This is on shelf price for about $3.50. It goes on sale for $2.70. However, I got these as a clearance for 80 cents a pack. So I picked up four because they're quite shelf stable and I know that we're gonna use them. Once we eventually run out, then only will I purchase them when they go on sale for $2.70 or less, or we might have to look at a different type of pasta for the base of what we wanna have. Let's talk snacks. My daughter and my husband enjoy these ramen noodles in the mild and the spicy. Shelf price, they're $1.90. I will not pay that. They go on special for $1.50, but the best ever price they were were a dollar quite a few weeks ago. So I bought 10 of each because they will last quite a while in this house. So while a little bit more expensive than a normal pasta, say, with all the ingredients and the flavoring inside, it works out cheaper and convenient. It means that people can get their own food should they need to. We buy the home brand muesli bars. There's eight chocolate chips in here. They're $1.90 for a pack. have gone up for about 10 cents, or they work out to 23 cents a bar. Either way, two bites and they're gone. So we're gonna pay for home brand, not for a name brand. I like to have some different lunch options. Cross gets their on shelf price for about $3, I think. I don't know. I only buy these at NQR for a dollar each. Once they disappear, I'll look at something different. The same with the Vita Wits. They're $3.30 for shelf. At NQR, they're $2 a pack. However, when Woolworths put them out on clearance for 89 cents, I bought eight packets because they had an entire pallet load there. So I only took eight. Wishing I got more, but we'll get through these first and then we'll see where we end up. Meal bases are super popular in our household. I'm not really a cook, so it's easier for me just to add something to it and complete a meal. Canton jars we love and shelf price, they're about $3.50 to $4, depending where you are. They go on special for about $3 a jar, sometimes two for $5. Best ever price I've seen them is $1.87 at Foodland. The other week they were $2 at Coles, so I massively stocked up. Packet mixers will often go on special at Coles, just depends what you're looking for. About $2 is the rule that I have to wait for one of these to come down on special. I actually have two of these garlic ones because I got one free from the flybys offer and then I found one for 99 cents, so it beats the $2 rule. The same with the lamb casserole, a spicy chicken one. And this Continental Pack was actually 50 cents from the reject shop. So again, think outside the square of where you can go. Chips are a very important thing in our house for those much late night needed snack attacks. And I will not pay any more than $2 for a packet of chips. I don't care who you are, especially with the size of the packaging going down. It is important for a pack of chips to be $2 or less. This is 175 grams and it is $1.80 at Coles everyday price. There used to be some Thins sweet chili chips that were $2, so I was happy to pay for those. They're now $2.25, they're now off my list, unless they're gonna come down to a super price of being $1.87. I will then purchase a couple of them because they are my husband's favorites, but he said he's more than happy to stick with these at $1.80 until the super special comes. The same with the Shapes Biscuits. They used to be best ever price of $1.49 and that's when I'd stock up. They're now $1.60 and they're the same weight as these chips. So a little bit cheaper for these, for these. So again, I will stock up on these because they're a little bit of a good treat for the house. But again, I have prices that I will not go over. Pizza bases, I buy them because then they're exactly the same time every time. Yes, it's cheaper to make your own, go for it. But when you live in a household with people who have sensory and texture needs, you need the pizza base to be the same every time. So I won't pay any more than $2 for a single pizza base. So I wait till these are on special at Coles for the two pack for $3 
or I get them as a markdown. This just also happens to be $3 markdown. I was sure I didn't have any, so I grabbed a pack because they weren't on special at Coles. To put on top of your pizza, you're going to need pineapple. Yes, pineapple does go on pizza. This is home brand, 425 grams. It is pineapple slices, it's $1.20. If you buy the pineapple pieces, it's $1.30. You're paying someone 10 cents to chop up your pineapple. We like mushrooms in a can. They're small and cute. This is a smaller jar for $1.90 because it was on clearance for 50 cents each. Usually the bigger can is about $3.75. And again, for the whole champions, it is $1.30. Or you can buy the pieces and the stems for $1.70. So again, you're paying someone to cut them up for you. As I said, these little jars were on clearance for 50 cents each, making the unit price cheaper than the bigger jars. And also it's going to help us with our meal portions because smaller is easier. Last but not least is tin tomatoes, home brand. These are 60 cents each, or you can buy a brand name, especially when they're on a clearance for 50 cents each. So yes, they're 10 grams lighter than this one. However, I'll take the price 10 cents cheaper than this one. Oh, good price difference. Every day crushed tomatoes are about 80 cents. If you want to add in the herbs, they're $1.20 again for 400 grams. You can buy the double tin together, which is $1.50. But again, just for the straight crushed tomatoes, have no idea what it is with the herbs because we just don't pay for that. We can add our own herbs in. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you have enjoyed me rattling off all of the prices of the things that we purchased and what my rules are. I know my prices inside and out, back to front of what we do buy. So they're the rules that I stick to. So then when I'm marked on shopping, I can look at something and know if that price is better than the everyday home brand or the best ever sale I can get. I can remember if it's been on sale recently or if I think it's about to come up. For some stuff that's shelf stable, I'm more than happy to buy two or three of them because I know they'll last. Or it just means they get cycled through our meal plan a lot quicker and then we end up having them instead of waiting a longer time. Anything that can fit in the freezer, absolutely it's going in there. But we all know that's just about chock a full. So I also need to deal with that pretty quickly. So as great as it is finding some of the meat deals that I can get, <sighs> we're running out of room if you enjoyed today's video please give it a thumbs up i have really enjoyed sharing with you today leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have any food rules and prices and what you will and will not pay for things i know the price is going up so let's have a chat in the comments below subscribe if you haven't already we would love to have you as part of our frugal fun family and as always i look forward to seeing you next time bye